So how did we come to Eastern? Well, for me, as uh, I was a junior, senior, starting to look around the state, I decided I didn't want to go to a large school such as U of I, but something a little more intimate. And uh, Eastern popped out as opposed to Southern and uh, some of the others. So that was my first choice and uh, actually the only one I applied to. Some of my friends were going to Eastern, so that's why I decided to go. And plus it was a good school for teachers, so that was my reason. A particular memory about Eastern for me was certainly meeting Mary uh, on campus. Uh, and that's uh, been uh, many, many, many years ago. We're uh, coming up on to uh, 38 years as of uh, Halloween. Well, in terms of faculty members, uh, certainly the ones that stick out uh, were from the business school, people like uh, Dr. Cliff Fagan, uh, who was uh, chair of the business school at that point, and uh, also Dr. John Moore, uh, Dr. Moore, to get us excited for his marketing class uh, test, would recite Viking poetry. And when he would boom out the, the poetry, we would see Dr. Uh, Giffen, who was dean at the time, come running down the hall to figure out what was going on. Uh, but probably my favorite teacher of all time was uh, Bert Holly, who was the business law instructor at the time. Well, Bert was uh, so different than any other uh, professor I had. He was the type of guy that didn't care if you took one side or the other of an argument. He would take the opposite, and he would make you defend yourself by grabbing a chair, setting it down beside your desk, and starting to argue with you to make sure that you had courage of your convictions. How did we meet each other at Eastern? The story diverges a little bit, but... Well, you tell your story first, and then I'll correct you. Uh, <laughs> we both were at a party on Halloween night at a place called Andy's house. Not together. Not together. I came with girlfriends. I came with uh, some fraternity guys. Um, we didn't really know Andy, but we were always invited to Andy's house for the parties. And so we show up. I asked Mary to dance to Chicago's Color My World just before midnight. And uh, she did, fortunately. I think she gave me her phone number because she didn't think I'd remember it. And yeah, that's pretty much. And I was shocked when he did remember it. I don't know why I gave him my right phone number at the time, but <laughs> I did. So I asked her out uh, the next day. I taught school when we first got married, and Don quit his job in, in his hometown area and came with me, and that was in 74, so that was the um, first uh, recession, well, first one for us. And so I had the big job teaching, so he came to live where I was in Springfield, Illinois. I had been with the FBI in Washington, D.C. for a short period and then moved back to the Mount Carmel area. Um, ran a bowling alley, a supper club, and a, a bar for a year. And um, then after we were married, I got a job at to the Springfield Marine Bank in Springfield, Illinois, working for the Bunn family of the bun coffee machines. The oldest bank in Illinois, Lincoln's Bank, very historic. Um, ended up in the investment department, and from there it took us on a bit of an odyssey uh, from Springfield to Denver to San Francisco, a couple of years in Tokyo where I set up and ran a Wall Street firm's office. And we moved back to Denver for a short period, and next thing I knew we were being offered a job in Seattle. That was uh, in uh, November of uh, 1988. We moved out there and uh, have been there ever since. We, um, I was with Bank America, ran one of their funds uh, in the investment side and was an analyst and then uh, started my own firm, uh, co-founded um, when I retired two years ago, what turned out to be a $1.2 billion wealth management firm. So from uh, that firm, I, as chief investment officer, I spend a lot of time on uh, CNBC, Bloomberg TV, 
uh, being interviewed by magazines, newspapers, etc. I enjoyed being a special education teacher from when I graduated in 73 until we moved to Denver the first time in 82. I had two young daughters and I was having lots of babysitter problems and was happy to retire. I thought it was going to be a short-lived retirement, but we kept moving, so I did not. I was lucky enough not to have to work, so I stayed home and volunteered. It, it really allowed me to break away from uh, family and uh, uh, friends and, and end up uh, on, a, on a journey that uh, took us through a lot of uh, different places around the world and in life and so it really started us on that journey. I had a very good friend from college days by the name of Scott Preston. Scott was uh, teaching and still is in the business school marketing uh, classes uh, Scott and I hooked up uh, back in 1996 when I was visiting campus uh, and uh, just to see him actually. Uh, Scott contacted the Dean of the Business School, Ted Ivory at the time. Ted uh, in turn flew to Seattle, he happened to have relatives close by and invited me onto the Business Advisory Board. That was in 1996, uh, so 23 years after uh, we graduated. Um, from the Business Advisory Board, I, I served a couple terms there, went on to the Alumni Board, and now uh, am entering into uh, my fifth year of uh, being on the Foundation Board. Uh, I've been Treasurer, Chair of the Investment Committee, and will be the uh, Vice President in the upcoming year. Never would I have thought we'd be able to give back to something like that. So. We're just very, very fortunate to be able to, and so it feels good. Giving back to Eastern uh, has been certainly a focal point of our lives the past few years. We've been very fortunate. Eastern played a very big part in that in terms of me going to school, getting an education, and being able to move on in life and compete. With that, uh, we have a responsibility to give back to those that uh, maybe aren't as fortunate. When we were in school, we were lucky enough to get scholarships. We've set up a scholarship for uh, kids from one of our two hometowns. Uh, we have uh, given to the Securities Analysis Center. The investment business was very, very good to uh, us over the years. I was very fortunate that not only was the investment business a, uh, a hobby, so to speak, but a vocation in life for me. It was something I didn't plan. I happened to fall into it 30-some uh, uh, years ago and uh, it turned out to be something I was good at. So because of that, we made uh, contributions to the Securities Analysis Center to give back part of that largesse that uh, we were able to, uh, to enjoy. Um, we also give uh, time and uh, modicum of talent that we might have to the school because it's not just treasure. There are other ways to give back. Part of that's been through the various boards that uh, have been fortunate enough to uh, to be on and serve on and uh, it's been quite an honor to serve on those but it's also something that uh, is part of that whole give back type of phase. So for us uh, giving back to Eastern uh, was a, a normal part of the transition in our lives as we uh, as we were able to uh, move forward. Why should others be giving back to Eastern? If you've been a successful person and somewhere along the way somebody has been able to show you some kindness, there's a time in life that you need to take responsibility to give back. For us, Eastern was one of those ways. By no means is it the only way we do it, but it's a place that's near and dear to our heart, and so we, uh, we made it a priority as part of uh, one of the ways that, that we wanted to give back. I think everybody needs to search their soul a little bit as they become successful, realize where their roots are at, and then uh, take a little tip from that to give back to that place that helped you get started. Just give me a hug.